18 News begins with a forecast first from the 18 Storm Team. Good Wednesday to you. I'm live outside of our studio downtown Elmira. Just a couple sprinkles for us at the moment, but rain is still with us over the next 24 hours. Flash flood watch in effect. This is for counties in green, our viewing area. This will start late tonight, early tomorrow, and continue through a good portion of the day. Scattered showers across the area right now. Pockets of heavy rainfall. That's the greens, dark greens and yellows we can see. And current conditions, temperatures right now into the upper 60s, mid 70s. We will slowly cool down tonight. Lows mid to upper 60s. Scattered showers into tonight, and then rain becomes steady and heavy at times into tomorrow. More on what you can expect with this coming up. 18 News at 5:30 starts now. Live from your local news leader, this is 18 News at 5:30. Here's what's happening right now at 5:30. Community members mourning the death of a 14-year-old football player who suffered an injury during a game. And an update on the Gabby Petito case as the hunt continues for her fiance, the only person of interest in the case. Why that search is now heading underwater. Plus, the Treasury releasing just how much they've been spending on COVID relief. Details on that and how much more they have left straight ahead. Good evening. Thank you for joining us for 18 News at 530. I'm Sarah Wilson. We begin tonight with a heartbreaking story out of upstate New York where a JV football player has died after suffering an injury during a game. Today, community members are mourning the death of 14-year-old Tyler Christman, who was injured during a JV football game on at West Genesee. Officials say after he suffered a serious head injury, he collapsed on the field. Tyler's dad posted an emotional message on Facebook today honoring his son. He's also speaking out, saying that he died at an upstate university hospital in Syracuse. His final moments included a hero walk, a ceremonial event to honor a patient before an organ donation. A couple near Albany charged in connection with the death of their infant son and now the target of a manhunt by the U.S. Marshals Service. Anthony Ojeda was charged with the murder of his six-week-old son, Eli. Ojeda's husband, Neil Garzen, is charged with endangering the welfare of a child. Baby Eli died in December of 2019 after police say he ingested methamphetamine. Now a manhunt is underway after the two failed to appear in court. If found guilty, Ojea could face 25 years to life in prison, and Garzan would serve up to a year. A new state law in New York is causing outrage among some members of law enforcement. The Less Is More Act became a state law last week and is intended to cut down on parole violators for those who are behind bars on technical violations like being late to a parole officer appointment or missing a curfew. State officials say they are trying to prevent longer prison stays for those who violate parole. Law, law enforcement officials argue that holding a parolee on violation can keep the community safe. Out of the 17 people that walked out of here, we have active investigations going on with some of those individuals where they are people of interest in other very serious crimes. They were being held here in our jail on a parole violation. They were off the street while the investigations proceeded. Some sheriff's offices in New York say they plan on doing a full risk assessment on every inmate released under that new state law. Meanwhile, Rochester police have arrested an inmate who was released just yesterday as part of that new less is more law. Parolee Joseph Riviera is charged with the murder and the death of Heather Majors. He was arraigned this morning. Majors was killed in her apartment on July 10th when police say she was stabbed over 30 times. Riviera, who is 21, was being held in the Monroe County Jail for violating the terms of his parole. Investigators were building the case against him when he was unexpectedly released yesterday morning, but authorities arrested him last night without incident. 
Yesterday, coroners confirmed that the body found last weekend was missing 22 year old Gabby Petito. Now, the search is intensifying for the only person of interest in that case, Brian Laundry, Gabby's fiance. Today, crews took their search underwater as they continue to look for laundry. Around noon today, the sheriff's underwater recovery force was deployed to search the swampy area in that nature reserve. The commander leading this search says about 75% of the 25,000 acres they're combing through is in fact underwater. Police say laundry went to the reserve last Tuesday and has not been seen since. In our political roundup tonight, former President Donald Trump is suing his niece and the New York Times, claiming they conspired to obtain his tax returns. Trump filed a $100 million lawsuit in New York yesterday and accuses Mary Trump of breaching a settlement agreement by disclosing tax records that she received in a dispute over a family member's estate. Those records were revealed to three reporters with the New York Times and later published in a 2018 story about Trump's wealth and tax practices. In a statement, the Times says it plans to challenge the lawsuit. Mary Trump is calling her uncle, quote, desperate. Yesterday, former President Trump and ex First Lady Melania Trump launched a website. 45office.com allows supporters to request their participation in events, submit letters, as well as ask for personalized greetings. The former president's office said in a brief statement yesterday evening that the former first couple is strengthened by enduring the spirit of the American people and look forward to staying in touch with their supporters. And should the candidate with the most votes in an election automatically win? Well, a pencil lawmaker says no, not always. Lancaster County State Senator Scott Martin wants to make sure voters aren't writing in candidates as a joke. Under the bill, a writing candidate must receive at least the same number of write in votes as would be required if they had filed signed nomination petitions. If they don't, they can't win. Martin says this would weed out writing candidates who are chosen by friends as a prank or who just don't have any interest or experience. A committee approved the bill, which will now head to the full Senate. Coming up right here at 5.30, the U.S. Treasury has released just how much they've dished out for COVID relief. Those numbers coming up next. A cloudy and rainy day for the Twin Tiers. We're seeing clouds now at the Elmira Corning Regional Airport and scattered showers across the area. Scattered showers into tonight, rain steady and heavy at times into tomorrow. I'll have more on this in my full forecast. Stay tuned. You're watching 18 News at 5.30. It's time for your Daily J. Shop ChooseNissan.com. Here's today's category. Lottery. Now, the clue. A bartender in this show-me state received a Powerball ticket as a tip. A huge tip. It won $50,000. Stay tuned for the correct response.
It's time for your Daily J. Shop ChooseNissan.com. Here's today's category. Lottery. Now, the clue. A bartender in this show-me state received a Powerball ticket as a tip. A huge tip. It won $50,000. The correct response. What is Missouri? For more categories and clues, watch Jeopardy! Weeknights at 7 on WETM 18. You're watching 18 News at 5.30. Welcome back. In Washington, the House is passing legislation to fund the government while also suspending the federal debt limit. The measure also provides disaster and refugee aid to support Afghanistan evacuees. Congress is also working to avoid a federal shutdown at the end of the fiscal year, which is coming up. It's on September 30th. Republicans in the Senate are expected to block this measure. The Treasury Department is out with a tally of how much has been spent in COVID relief funds since the American Rescue Plan was signed into law. The government says it shelled out about $700 billion out of a trillion set aside for relief. $450 billion of those funds were distributed directly to families and households via stimulus payments and child tax credits. Meanwhile, holiday shoppers in a pinch are getting an early greeting from the Grinch. According to the American Christmas Tree Association, consumers could experience a shortage of artificial trees and other decor this holiday season. Some sellers are already increasing their prices for artificial trees and other holiday products by at least 20 percent. Experts say if you are looking to buy a fake tree this year, it's best to do it now while they're still in stock. It's also not a bad idea to go ahead and start making your gift purchases now. We know it's September, but that will ensure that your special something is wrapped and ready for the holidays. Let's take a look at how Wall Street ended today. The Dow closed the day gaining 338 points. The S&P 500 gained 41 points, while the Nasdaq gained 150 points on the day. That's what's happening on Wall Street. Here's a look at your local stocks on Main Street.
Welcome back. Occasional showers today coming along with brief downpours. Cloudy conditions as well, and that's what we're looking at now still for the city of Elmira. Scattered showers today, but rain becomes steady and heavy at times tomorrow. Flash flood watch will be going into effect. This is tonight into tomorrow. This is in effect for the twin tiers as we have that potential for heavy rainfall. Conditions favorable for some isolated flash flooding to occur through Thursday. Weather set up, low pressure moving into the Ohio Valley area and Great Lakes region. As it does so, we're seeing that moisture push into our area. For tomorrow, that system pulls north and west. This will eventually push a cold front through our area. Scattered showers right now, some pockets of heavy rainfall. That's the shades of dark green and yellow we can see on our satellite radar. As we head through this evening and also early tonight, scattered showers will continue for us. Cloudy and foggy conditions as well. Heading into late tonight, early tomorrow, this will happen right around midnight or shortly after. We see that batch of steady rain start to push into our area and those shades of oranges and yellows showing the heavy rainfall rates. Slowly but surely, the system will continue to progress from west to east throughout the pre-dawn hours Thursday and also mid-morning hours on Thursday. We see that system continue to move through. Steady rain will come along with it. In the wake of that cold front, still some lingering showers. This will be the case through tomorrow afternoon. As it stands, heaviest rain will fall in the morning, early afternoon, and seeing that chance for some stray showers through late day into the overnight, decreasing cloud cover otherwise. Heading into Friday, fog will start our day, but it looks like a dry start at least. By the afternoon, a few fair weather clouds moving in for us and looking mainly dry. Slight chance for a shower, best chances staying into the southern tier. As for rainfall totals around the area, it's looking at anywhere from about one to three inches. Highest amounts will fall into Tyler County, PA, again, where that steady rain is expected to set up late tonight into tomorrow. This includes Steuben County as well. Heaviest rain tomorrow. That's through late day. This will fall in areas shaded with yellow excessive rainfall outlook. So again, keeping an eye on areas prone to poor drainage and also areas that have experienced excessive rainfall over the last few weeks as that isolated flash flooding potential is with us for Thursday. Also with us, the potential for an isolated strong severe thunderstorm. Best chances for that shaded areas of dark green. And with that, the concern comes strong gusty winds. Keeping this in mind through tomorrow. Cooler temperatures as well. Temperatures currently were in the mid 60s and still low to mid 70s. And as we head into tonight, temperatures will just cool down a few degrees. Overnight lows tonight into the mid to upper 60s. Scattered showers and then rain likely steady and heavy at times late tonight into tomorrow. Temperatures tomorrow will warm up or near 70. Cloudy conditions, chance for a few thunderstorms as well. And heading into the end of the work week, it looks like a dry one. Heading into the start of the weekend, it looks like a dry day as well. Overnight, though, that chance for a few showers, that is possible heading into Sunday. Not a washout, though. There's still that chance. Keep that in mind, stepping out the door. But not everyone will experience rainfall Sunday. Heading into next week, dry start. 18 News at 530. We'll be right back after the break.
You're watching 18 News at 5.30. Hey, it's Scott and Allie. Uh, nice to know our friend the rain has not gone too terribly far from our lives. Oh, my gosh. I feel like we live in Seattle, right? <laughs> Ooh, all this That's summer. what it feels like. Well, also say goodbye to these things. Do you remember the, all these like really cute little plastic toys that come in the McDonald's Happy Meal? Do I remember? Just the other night after Gavin's open house at school, I took the kids to get Happy Meals and, of course, the plastic's in there. So as a parent, I applaud that the plastic toys are going away. Oh, look at the My Little Pony at the top. I know. Oh, that's like a collector's item. I think that if you have any of these, remember the Fry Guys, the little plastic Fry Guys? Oh, gosh, yeah. You're probably going to make a lot of money because by 2025, they said they're going to phase out plastic toys, or at least as much as they possibly can. I wonder what they're going to replace them with. Felt because dolls. a coloring book really sounds fun and right? a happy meal. Felt dolls. <laughs> you know what's great for you, though? Besides Legos, I'm sure this is the numero uno thing that you step on as a parent. Oh, if I have to clean up one more McDonald's plastic toy, and we don't get it that often, yeah. but they breed, they multiply. Oh, I one know. One happy meal toy becomes 10. I don't know how. All of a sudden, when Gavin and Lydia aren't looking, throw it in the garbage. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> don't blow up my spot, girl. Yeah. All right, I've got to share, while we're on the subject of kids, I got to share this video with you. It's really cute. Do you remember as a kid, you would play the game? Game, ding dong ditch oh yeah oh yeah uh well these kids did it but they haven't really understood the concept of like a video camera and it's kind of humorous yeah so. it's got to be hard to play this now yeah well you're about to see how hard it is i want to point out the fact look at the little alley pain the girl always the instigator here getting the boys to do what they shouldn't be doing Heck yeah. We have before. We have before. No, because there's a camera on it. Here, I'll cover the camera. Wait a minute. <laughs> You're already busted. Oh, and I also my. like that they've admitted that they did it before, too. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Now they're doubly busted. Yes. Oh, exactly. Man. Something went wrong there. You figure it out. Scott, you're a troublemaker. You should teach him how to really do this. Oh, yeah. Tape it up, you know. Here's what you do. Stand on the side. Here's what you do. If the camera, you stand there, you tape it up so they can't see your uh -huh. face. Uh-huh. Just your and, hand. And then you ding-dong. Uh-huh. On see? that note. <laughs> More 18 News next. Bye.
You're watching 18 News at 5.30. That does it for us for 18 News at 5.30, but don't go anywhere. 18 News at 6 is happening right now.